Welcome to Beyond the Reiki Gateway with Reiki Masters Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you through donations. Links to help support our all-volunteer effort are in the show notes and also on our website, beyondthereikigateway.com. And now it is time to begin our journey together, Beyond the Reiki Gateway. Hello, everyone. Kathleen Johnson here with my co-host, Andrea Kennedy. Today, we have with us William Stillman. You may remember his episode from January, and we are delighted to have him back again today. For those of you who are not familiar with William, he's an internationally known, award-winning author of several books about autism, spirituality, and psychic information. Bill has worked professionally as a psychic since 2004. He has been consulted on missing person and unsolved homicide cases. He also serves as an investigative resource to the Pennsylvania Paranormal Association. Now for today's episode, we have a very special preview of an event that Andrea and I are honored to host with William in July where he will be conducting one of his famous psychic galleries. William will be interacting with a few of our very loyal listeners of the podcast, and William will be offering guidance and using his experience as a psychic medium to offer readings to these ladies and to perhaps make suggestions about their path forward. I just want to note that William has never met these ladies, not even aware of their names until he arrived here in the studio. So without further ado, I want to get this started for this preview of what is going to be coming your way in July with William Stillman's Psychic Gallery. And yes, thank you so much for joining us, William. And also in the studio today, we have three wonderful, loyal fans of the show. We have Gail, Anne, and Sarah. We welcome all of you here today. And William, would you mind leading us in one of your very special blessings? Thank you, Andrea and Kathleen, for having me back. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm um, anxious and interested to see what comes of our time together. And as you know, as you know me, and you've been with me on several occasions now, I don't do anything without saying a blessing first. And so let's do that. And then we'll get underway and we'll see what comes of our time together with these three lovely gals that are joining us this morning. I'm going to, with you, take three breaths And then I'll say the blessing, and then we'll get underway. So let's take our first breath, gals. Heavenly Father, author of the universe, creator of all that is seen and unseen, we are grateful and blessed to be united in your presence this morning. Kindly grant us the gift and special privilege to be of good and great service to one another, so that we in turn might render great and glorious service to others through the grace of all that we have been, all that we are presently, and all that we are becoming. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for indulging me. Um, I I think it's always a good form and best practice to protect ourselves prior to doing any kind of spiritual work. So I need to know if any of the three ladies that are with us today has a connection to the name Rose and everyone that I'm to whom I'm referring has passed on, unless I say that they are still here. So I need to know if there's a Rose, Rosemary, Rosemary, or I'll also take a connection to uh, a female who had a um, an affinity for roses. I'm kind of leaning toward Anne, to be honest with you. I have china with roses on it. And is the china handed down from an older female who has passed on? Not the china I'm thinking of, but I think I might have a few pieces from my great aunt and there were roses on there. That's what I need. I need the rose connection to an older female who has passed on. Okay. It it does have roses on it. I'm certain. So the great aunt would sort of be like a grandmother figure then, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. and and you knew her, Anne? Yes. 
Okay. May I have her first name? I also need to ask about someone with a V name as well. Uh, her first name was Lawrence. Yeah. And whose has the V name that has passed on? This is all for Anne right now, by the way. I can't think of anybody. Okay. okay. Think yeah. think about it. Please be on our time together. And Florence, um, there's an elegance about her. I want to tell you that. It seems to me as though she's very traditional in many respects. And can you verify this for me? No, that doesn't sound like Florence. So what I'm describing doesn't sound like Florence, but who, for whom does that make sense on the same side of the family? A woman who's, she's very elegant. She has great taste, very traditional, very traditional in her values. And it's a family member. Who has passed on again? It feels like an older female to me. Okay, how about Elora? And what's the connection there? That would be um, my grandmother. That would be Florence's sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Okay, and her name again? I'm sorry. Elora. Laura. So, and did you know Laura? Yes. Okay, so she's the grandmother, right? Yes. Okay, and what is her connection to roses? She probably had roses in her garden. Okay. Do you know that for a fact? Because I don't want you to guess. I don't remember it for a fact. Okay. So I'm seeing roses and I'm smelling roses. Again, I'm going to stand by connected to a grandmother figure, as I said orig initially, right? Mm -hmm. And Laura is someone who would have had something of an elegance or grace about her, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, good taste. Um good decorating taste, um, yes. a great eye for color, design, pattern. She dresses beautifully also. I'm also being shown a little cross around her neck, and So that's my symbol for someone who was um, devout in her faith. She was. Thank you. And I think that she was a great, someone who was a great nurturer and encourager particularly when it came to reading. And I don't know if you recall receiving books from her as gifts at the yes. holidays or for birthday in particular. Yes. She's showing me specifically the book Little Women. And I don't know if you recall if that was one of them. Yes. You recall receiving that from her? I think yes. if you, I don't know if you still have it. There may be an inscription in it um, as, a, as a dedication to you. I do have it. Is it in the room? Um, I'm looking. I'm I'm in my library. I don't think it's in this room today. No. Oh boy. So um, if it would be really interesting if um, maybe when we're done here, if you could run and see if you could find it quickly to see if the inscription. It might be a happy birthday inscription to you. And what's the significance, Anne, of the year 1951? That's my birth year. Thank you. She wants to acknowledge that you are remembered by her. She holds you dear in her heart. And she makes me feel as though you have, in many respects, um, maybe unconsciously, emulated her. I try. She makes me feel also as though you are a patron of the arts. So I don't know if you have a, a particular connection to the arts and creatives community. Uh, if you have a, an appreciation for people who are artisans and craftspeople, musicians, people who can sing and entertain, people who are um, able to to uh, perform ballet and other forms of dance. But she, these are her, her interests, and she's making me feel as though you share those interests. Yes. If that would make sense. Beautiful. Um, she's also making reference to the month of August as being significant for some reason. So I think I, her birthday. Thank you. Okay. So um, there's a connection there to the, her upcoming birthday, rather. Um, she is showing me the word timeless. And she says that you have an understanding and an appreciation that nothing and no one ever really dies. Yes. She says that you, you have attained this understanding because you have... Um, invested she's talking about the past 12 years in particular 
which would take us back to about 2010, right? The past 12 years in particular, you have invested significant time in learning and growing and evolving spiritually, gaining information and um, doing some connection to like-minded people. Absolutely. Over the past dozen years, correct? Yes. Yep. And uh, for those of you, I know this is all purely audio, but you may, the gals that are on with me, you may see me tracing numbers and words in the air. That's what I do. I see them in the air and then I end up tracing them. So um, uh, I also need to ask about the male that would be with uh, Grandma Laura, who has the H name. And I almost want to say Henry or Hank. Oh. Is it ringing a bell? Her brother, but I, I, I can't think of his first name. Um, is it possible that there's a male energy with her that is an H name? Um, no, it was Charlie. Her brother's name was Charlie. Nope, I need an H on her side of the family that would be with her. So think about it beyond our time together then if it's not coming to you now, Anne. Okay. Okay. And I also need to know if anyone had a connection to a horse or pony, because I'm seeing that as well. On that on that side. Mm -hmm. Not that I know. Yeah. Okay. It might be a Shetland pony, which there that's a miniature pony, correct? Yes. I don't know. This was at a birthday party or um connection to a stable or a farm or something like that um so think on that also there's a connection to a farm a farm okay do you know if they would have had horses yes perfect okay that's what i needed to know and that's on that side of the family on laura's side no different side of the family different side and who has who's the male connected to the farm well that could be the h name henry that's what I needed. Thank you. So that's Henry. Henry has the connection to the farm. Uh, and that's the other side of the family. Okay. So I might be, then they might be passing the torch to Henry, which is when we didn't get the H name, then she brought up the horses. So we're kind of getting beat over the head with it a little bit. So uh, <laughs> I want you to know that Grandma Laura um, remembers you fondly. She's very pleased and proud that there's um, a lot about her that you, um, that you emulate. Because she um, she was very dignified in so many ways, just a class act, a class act. And she says, well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And she's referring to you. <laughs> so that's lovely. Now, that I want to talk about Henry and who is he? Because <laughs> that's the name I mentioned initially, Henry. <laughs> I want to call him Hank, actually. And I wonder if he went by that. <laughs> I don't think. No, no. He was a. a uh, okay, very... then don't volunteer. Don't volunteer information. Okay. I just need to know who he was. He would be my mother's uncle, so he would be my great uncle on mom's side. Yes, of the family. Okay, yes. he's an interesting character, and I don't know if you knew him. <laughs> he's, Not well. He's a little. I want to say a little rough around the edges. Maybe he's sort of a man's man. He yes. feels to me as though he could be um, a, maybe a little bit, um, I don't want to say crude, but maybe um, uh, doesn't always mind his, his manners, um, can be, can be a little bit grouchy, 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 maybe um, he, um, I think he can be a little bit brusque, shall we yes. say? Yes. So thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I'm also smelling alcohol. And I'm wondering if he was known to be a drinker. And I'll tell you why, because he shows me the word depressed. Yes. Connected to him, connected to himself. And I'm wondering, he's, I, I feel as though he, oh, he says he was alcoholic. I'm feeling as though he may have been doing his best to try to self-medicate I would say yes. A mental, emotional experience that he didn't understand himself. And I feel as though there is some trauma connected to his past, believe it or not. Yes. Um, to his childhood past. So I want to put that out there to you for your consideration. Okay. Uh, do you know if he had also been in military service? 
I don't believe so. Okay. All righty. Uh, but I want you to know that he says that he has reconciled his differences with his clan, which is kind of an odd word to use. And I don't know if that makes any sense to you. No. He's reconciled his differences with his family. Hmm. So I want to put that out there, too. I don't know if there was some some tension or clashing there. Um, within, And you may not have firsthand knowledge of this. No, I with, don't. It, with his family. Right. But, no, um, don't. Now, they are suggesting... And that you're you're doing some writing or you're going to be doing some writing. Uh, so I don't know if you have something planned that's coming up or if you no. are preparing for something or if you are. Do you write co copy for anything? No. Do you know what that word means? No, I don't do anything like that. OK, so I I'm going to stand by what I'm telling you in that it. I don't know what associations uh, uh, or organizations you're affiliated with, but it almost feels as though you're writing like a little promo piece of some sort or, or, or something that's introducing something. Uh, I'm going to put that out there for your consideration. Okay. Okay. Now I also need to ask about the male who has passed on with the D name. D is in David, Daniel, Donald, Donald. I'll take who is Donald. My father. Daddy. Okay. Do you have his watch, by the way? No. He's pointing to his watch. Do you know who has it? I don't. Okay. Do you recall if it, there had been an inscription on the back of it? I don't know. Okay. Because it almost feels as though it was given in recognition of some sort. Is that a possibility? Could be. For years of service, for example. Could be. Yeah. So I'm yeah. wondering about that. Okay. He's talking about 30 years as being significant. Do you know to what that is referring? No. And is it possible that was the number of years of service? Could be. Okay. I'm wondering about that. Um, he also, I'd have to tell you, he smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's wearing um, an aftershave. Or something, it smells almost like pine, like a woodsy type of scent. And I don't know if that makes sense to you. No, it doesn't. Um, can you think of to what that would be referring? A kind of outdoorsy type of woodsy type of smell. All righty. Hold on, please. Donald, right? Donald. Yep. He's wearing green. He calls himself Mr. Green Jeans. He's wearing green uh, work pants and a plaid shirt. Oh, yes. And he uh, doesn't need his glasses anymore, he says. Oh. He has clear vision. And he's talking about recycling. So I don't know if he was uh, someone who was a, um, a bit of a, uh, a pack rat or someone who would uh, always be considering ways in which something could be repurposed or reused. Yeah, that sounds more like my mom. No. Because hmm. he's showing me like equipment in the garage. Oh, and... in the garage, car parts, some kind yeah, of Yeah, thank you. Parts. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> so he would recycle and repurpose things. Yes. And, and fiddle with things and get them up and running again. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. That's what I needed to hear. All right. Uh, he's making reference to the month of June as being significant. His birth month. Thank you. Okay. They're they're uh, not shy of ego today, are they? They're bringing up no. their birth months. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's doing some figuring on a piece of paper. He's uh, jotting down numbers. Uh, and I don't know if this is accounting or if it's no, he says it's estimates. Hmm. Was he known to m actually make or build things? He tinkered with cars. But I need to know if he was known to make or build things. It's like he's he's estimating a budget for something. No. Which it well, well but before you're quick to say no, I want you to think about it, please. Um, so I'm wondering if there was a project or projects that he 
was in, involved in where he would need to sort of figure out how much it would cost in advance. He's jotting these things down. And I think it may also be a reference to you as well. If you are uh, preparing or planning a budget for the future. I am. I am Perfect. working on that now. Perfect. Well, then this fits with what he wants to communicate to you. Oh. Because um, he was uh, he was very smart in that respect. Very, I want to say um, thrifty or frugal. 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 So he knew where every, every penny was going. And he wants, yes. To, correct? Yes. Thank you. And he wants to make sure that you are being as smart in preparing for your future. I, I don't know if that includes a retirement, but he keeps showing me the word retirement. Um, and he wants you to just be very wise and smart about it. That makes sense. If that would make sense to you. Perfect. And that's where really we're getting does. the figuring on the scrapbook paper. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you recall if he carried a pocket knife? Yes. Because I believe there's a screwdriver on it. No doubt. Also. And do you have that? You don't have his watch. Do you have his pocket knife? No. <laughs> oh, did he not graduate or did someone in his family not graduate from school? He graduated from school. He's making me he's making me feel as though because he I feel that you are well educated. And so he's making me feel as though you've done better for yourself than others of past generations in the family. I was the first to graduate from college in my family. That's what I needed to hear. Thank you. That's what I needed to hear. So he's very, very pleased and proud about that. And he says uh, that you're, a, he says you're my, my smart little gal. Sweet. Very nice. Very nice. That's what the figuring was. He was always figuring how to get my tuition payments. There it is. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, Ann. So questions about anything we've said. So we got grandma, we got uh, dad, and there was someone else who, who was the grouchy fella, Hank, Henry, excuse Henry. me. Henry. Henry, yes. He doesn't want to be called Hank. <laughs> no. Okay. Questions about anything that we've said. So dad, uh, everyone's very pleased and proud of you. I would be thrilled if you could find a copy of Little Women that grandma gave you and to see if there's an inscription there. Yes. And uh, dad just wants you to be very uh, smart with your money moving forward into a uh, retirement era and enjoy yourself also, but be, be frugal about where your money's going. That's uh, that's sage advice. I just became a widow and uh, we're working on my budget going forward. Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry for your loss. And uh, I think it's a little fresh and too soon, perhaps, to try to tap into husband. Um, but we could do that maybe um, some months out. Okay. Once you once you work through the worst of the, your your grief. Yes. Thank. But very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Questions about anything I've said, Anne? Otherwise, we'll move on to uh, one of the other ladies. No, it was it was terrific. Thank you so much. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and see if you can find that book. I will. <laughs> Thanks. All righty. Hello, it's Andrea. And in addition to being your host here at the podcast, I'm the founder of Mainstream Reiki, where bringing Reiki further into the mainstream is my mission. I offer quality Reiki classes of all levels to students attending live from around the world. And I've built a membership community as well to help Reiki people connect with each other through discussions, events, and Reiki practice. So if you're considering learning Reiki, or you already have, I invite you to visit MainstreamReiki.com to discover your next step in your Reiki journey. Thank you. And now, back to the show. Let me move on to Gail, if I may. Sure. Hi. Hi, Gail. Hi. Good to see you. Boy, you're, I want to describe you as someone who's rather esoteric. So it feels to me as though you, um, you're very worldly, very knowledgeable gal, uh, very eclectic interests, I want to say, if that would make sense to you. And 
I feel, I don't know where in the country you are, but I, there's almost like, I want to call you a California girl because you have that kind of vibe to you. <laughs> well, no, like I'm a, in Michigan. You're in Michigan. I'm hearing the Beach Boys singing. I wish they all could be California girls. You have that kind of vibe. <laughs> sun and surf. Sun and surf is what I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to be there. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gail, I have to ask you a crazy, crazy question. From I'm throwing you a curveball from way out in left field. Okay. Do you or anyone connected to you have any connection to UFOs or extraterrestrials? Not that I know of. Okay. It almost feels like there's that kind of energy around you also. I don't know if any you or anyone has had any instances of missing time in childhood or any anything unusual at all that you can recall not i can't recall that right now okay all right gail i'm going to ask you to give me one of your questions and we'll go from there oh my goodness one of my questions is i have four grown children that each one of them have had serious health problems recently I'd say in the last year. And oh my goodness. I just wondered going forward how their health and future looks. Okay. Um, is there anyone connected to you with an R name? That's past or that's I, uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I want to say both actually. So if one of your children is not an R name, then I'm going to vote for it's someone who's passed. My oldest daughter's middle name is R. Yeah. And how about someone who's passed on? My father is Robert. Robert. Let me go, let me start there, please. Um, your parents were good looking people, huh? Yes. They were attractive people. I am looking at what looks like a senior portrait of your father, if that makes sense. Had he been in military service also, your dad? Yes. Maybe it's a military portrait that I'm looking at. Um, do you recall it? Do you recall seeing his portrait from about the chest up? As a military man. It's a military. Mm -hmm. And there's also um, an insignia or the stripes or something on his um, uniform. I don't know what rank he was. I think there's a picture in a box someplace. Thank you. I, I'm going to see. Let's see if you can find it. But um, very, very handsome young fella. He had he been a smoker, by the way. Yes, because uh, there's a lot of smoke in the air, and he's got a cigarette. <laughs> I don't think he was ever really without a cigarette, except perhaps toward the very end of his life. But um, he is adoring of you. But I'm also wondering if he feels to me a bit remote, and I don't know if that would make sense to you. Remote, Emo emotionally, kind of a bit reserved. Yes. It's a little hard. It's a, thank you. It's a little hard to warm up to him. Yes. To, to be honest with you. Uh, so I feel that uh, probably mother was the one that maybe had the greater sense of warmth and maybe wanted to compensate for what dad was lacking. Uh, also, I need to ask who is Shirley? I don't know. Or I'll also take gal with the SH name. And this is someone who's passed on. Shirley, Sher Cheryl, mm -mm. Sharon, SH. No. Would you think about that beyond our time together, please? I will. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to ask you about is, Gail, is it at all possible that I'm being shown that um, he's connecting to the older daughter who has the R name? I want to know if, are these all your biological children? Yes. I want to know if, to your knowledge, there is anything in your family um, genetic history that would predispose your family and your children to any kind of um, immune deficiency. No, not that I know of. Okay. The reason why I'm asking is because, particularly with the, he's not focusing on the four children so much as he's focusing on the one child. Um, and all your children are here, correct? Correct. All right. It feels as though her energy has been depleted. 
that she's fatigued and drained of energy? Not so much now. Okay. It feels to me as though her immune system may be compromised. So I just want to put that out there for your consideration. Do you understand? Yes, that, that makes how that. Yes, that makes. Okay, so so you just said no to something, and now you're saying it makes sense. So please explain that. <laughs> um, when you said immune compromised genetically, there's nothing genetically um, that would do that. She had thyroid cancer and had um, radioactive therapy and okay. therefore that has probably depleted her immune system thank you that's what i needed to hear um, i'm gonna stand by the possibility of there's something there in family history also and the reason why i'm saying that is because it feels as though it may be the same thing that is in some way affecting all of your children so i want to put that out there okay okay just be be aware of that, please. Okay. Dan is also talking about you doing some writing or maybe specifically journaling. So I don't know if you keep a journal or um, a, you're making notes of things that you are observing. So he's talking about this. And I don't know if he had any interest in aviation or uh, space travel or anything at all like that, but he's drawing my attention up to the sky. No, I don't know if he was a, a, a bird watcher, a star watcher, a stargazer. No. Aviation, anything at all like that. Is this dad? Are you sure this is dad? But he's talking about uh, a shooting star in the night sky, and then he's also talking about making notes of things that you are observing that would strike you as... um unusual or spiritual. So if this isn't something that you are doing presently, it's something that I would encourage you to consider doing. He's also talking about the synchronicity of things in threes for you. Okay. No, that the stars and in, in that does not make any connection for me with my dad. All right. So I want you, so I want you to be paying attention please to Anything that you would be observing that would strike you as unusual, such as a shooting star in the night sky. Okay. And I don't know if you sit out at night and just meditate or look at the sky or whatever. I like to do that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stand by every word of what I'm saying to you. Okay. And then he's also talking about documenting anything that you are observing throughout the average day. That would be, that would strike you as unusual or possibly spiritual. And he's talking about the synchronicity of threes. So, for example, seeing triple digits on a clock. Yeah. Do you understand now? Mm -hmm. Seeing three, three of the same bird cross the street in front of you as you're driving, for example. Okay. okay. Uh, seeing or hearing the same name come up three times in the same day from different sources. He's talking about, because your dad to me feels very regimented and very methodical. That That isn't sounding like him. Um... So what he's saying is to be, be tracking this, to be documenting all of this, to chart your progress, because he says you're on a path toward a growth spurt but he wants you to get synchronized with everything else that is manifesting and unfolding around you. Okay. Does that make any sense to you? It does. <laughs> very much. Very much. Perfect. Whoa. Okay. It took us a while to get around to that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I'll All right. Make notes of that. And any ideas why he's showing me a Volkswagen? <laughs> that was my first car. Ah, okay. He remembers. <laughs> Yes. He remembers. Yes. Traumatized mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> you were traumatized. I don't know that he was the most patient person. <laughs> he taught me to drive in it. I was wondering about that. So I'm wondering if, you know, he got very frustrated with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very much. But he's, he's calling that to mind. Was it a stick shift, yeah. by the way? Yeah. Because yeah, oh. that must have been uh, terribly uh, confusing and upsetting for a, a teenage girl. And he's, you know. Uh, did he say, God damn it? 
<laughs> oh, probably. Yeah, because he's like cursing. Yes, that would be my dad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but that's hilarious. I have to ask Gail if you if you have a tie clip that belonged to him. I think so. He's making reference to that. Wow. And you have a son, correct? I do. He would like for your son to have the tie clip. I don't know if they knew one another or if they didn't Aww. know one another, but for a brief time. They were very close. They Oh, thank you. That's why he's singling out the son <laughs> as he wants. It's a little, and men don't wear tie clips anymore, I don't think. But, but oh, thank you. He says he doesn't have to wear it, but I want him to hold it. Oh, gosh. That makes Yes, I I will see if I can find it. He says, I want him to hold it because I want him to feel me. Mm -hmm. I want him to feel my energy because he needs it now. Your boy oh. needs that now. Could I have your son's first name and age, please? Uh, Danny. And Danny. He is 37. 37. Is he going through a rough, rough time right yeah. now? This is why your dad wants to give him some added support oh, okay. um, and to let him know, to let Danny know that grandpa hasn't forgotten him oh, gosh. and that he has his back and he wants him to pull through this with flying colors. Is he also having some financial difficulty, Danny? Not that I know of. Your, da your dad's showing me a symbol, like rubbing his fingers together, like there's a, a, a money issue or a financial issue. I don't know if Danny is running up debt. He has his own business and he's... I, I'm, I'm wondering what's going on with that or if there's any issue. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. If there's any issues financially with the business. But um, he says that Danny's, uh, Danny's uh, sense of spirituality in the way that you are spiritual, it's gotten away from him. Um, he says, okay. and he says, I, I want him to have my tie clip so that he can feel me. He can feel my energy to know that I love him. Mm -hmm. I love and adore him. Why is he, he showing me a fishing rod? Do you know what that's about? No, no, they were, they didn't fish together. No, my dad wasn't a fisherman. So. I'm wondering if there's something else connected to the fishing rod, like um, Danny's father. Like a Danny's father fished with him. He fished, and is is his father still here? He's passed. I think I think Dad's going to pass the torch now to Danny's father, which would be your your ex your ex husband, correct? Yes. Had you divorced? Yes. Okay, because I'm being shown a split. That's why I asked. If you were divorced, could I have uh, that person's first name and about the age when he passed, please? Uh, his name was Glenn, and I think he was 66. 60s, I'll take is fine. Okay. Glenn knows your dad, by the way. Yes, he did know my dad. Well, the, and they absolutely know each other now because this is your dad that is pulling him through. Okay. Glenn would have reason to need to apologize to you, correct? Yes. Yes. For being unfaithful. Yes. He shows me the word infidelity. So that's why I want to put that out there to you. He said, well, um, he said, I have hot nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is his way of saying he had um, a strong sex drive, perhaps we could say. But um, he wants you to know that you were, you are the perfect mother. He says, I know that you have second guessed yourself into uh, anxiety over wondering and worrying if you have done the best that you could. And he says, I want to tell you, I couldn't be prouder of our kids. And he says, it wasn't all bad, honey, was it? It wasn't all bad because look at what we created. And he says, um, why is he holding a gun? Um, my dad gave him a gun my dad had uh, from his father. Your dad gave that to Glenn? 
So that's also something that connects the two of them. But he says, um, mm -hmm. he's talking about a prom date, something about the prom. I don't know to what that is referring. No, I hadn't met him yet. So think about, it may not be a reference to you. It might be a reference to one of your children. Uh, but he says, I'm, I'm pleased and proud of our little crew. And he says, um, he says, honey, it's all on me. I take the rap. I take the rap. It's all on me. Wow. And he says, can you, can you ever forgive me? Can you ever forgive me of my human faults and frailties? He says, I was a real, ooh, I was a real asshole, he says. <laughs> Does that sound like something he would say? Please tell me, because I don't talk like that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Capital Y, yes. Yeah, capital Y, all right. And I don't know, Andrea, if uh, you gals will have to edit that out or if uh, we can keep that in, but. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll let it ride. We'll let it ride. Okay. <laughs> I don't like to talk like that. But he's taking, he's taking responsibility and he wants you to know that. And uh, he's making reference to the month of April as being significant. Do you know uh, to what that is referring there's a there's a, some event connected to the month of April. Yeah, it's in April. Thank you. Okay, so he's taking the rap for all of this, and um, he's thanking you for um, wow. being a, a terrific mother. Wow. And I don't know. I don't know if he ever actually told you that. Never. Never. Thank you. So that tells me a couple things, Gail. It tells me that he's where he is supposed to be. And it also tells me that where he is now, he has also evolved because he's taking responsibility for the dissolution of the marriage. And he is also telling you something that he didn't say while he was here in human form. And he says, I love you still. I love you still. It's very sweet. That's amazing, actually. It's beautiful. So uh, do you have questions about anything? that we've discussed. No, I'm kind of reeling from what you've just said. That's All right. pretty much. All right. I'm, I, I hope in a good way or a healing way and not in a, in a, um, an unnerving way. No, a very healing way. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So it was beautiful. Thank you. So, Anne, you found the book. I found the book right beside some roses. Oh, you've got <laughs> to be kidding. Oh no way. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. So there they cool. are. Oh right, be God, right beside the roses was the book. And when you oh. open it up, I know. Can you believe that? <laughs> you can't make this stuff you up. You can't make it up. No, you can't. Um, it is inscribed to Elizabeth Ann, which um, my first name is Elizabeth, and my grandmother always insisted upon remembering that. Elizabeth Ann from Grandma Gerhardt, Merry Christmas, 1959. Oh, my gosh. And it's wow. Little Women. Little Women. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Holy oh, cow. Isn't wild. that amazing? <laughs> So that was the, it wasn't someone named Rose. It was the Rose connection. Yes. <laughs> Holy wow. cow. That's amazing. And it, and it was right up here on the shelf, right beside the roses. So it was in the room with you the whole time. Yeah. And the roses. <laughs> and I've had this book since I was eight years old. <laughs> oh my wow. gosh. Wow. Amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. amazing. <laughs> All righty. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. All righty. Last but not least, and you've been very patient, Sarah, so thank you. <laughs> hey, Sarah, do, do you have a connection uh, to uh, a, a male who's passed on with a C name? Not that I can think of right now. Thank you. That's a good answer. Not that you can think of. Um I'm going to suggest then we kick things off by having you ask me one of your questions, and then we'll just, we'll kind of uh, free flow from there. I do an awful lot of genealogy. 
uh, my mother did before me for many, many years, and I took it up oh. when I was not young. Forgive me for interrupting. You don't want me to do that. I No, uh, but forgive me. I'm starting to get something. So I need to know, Sarah, if you have discovered if there was a child born out of wedlock or if someone was raised as someone else's child yes. within the fam within the family. Yes. Yes. And is that on, on whose side of the family? I'm leaning toward dad's. I don't know if that's correct. It's my mother's side. On mom's side. Now, I need to know if if there is in any way a connection to a male on that side with the C name. Yes. Your, yes. Thank you. And who is that person? That would be that child's father. Thank you. And uh, how, so that, that child's father is then not related to the family by blood? No, he is. He is. And what is his name, please? Charles. Thank you. Because I almost, go ahead. His name is Charles Raymond, and he went by Raymond. Okay, but his name was Charles, so maybe that was why you couldn't you did, you weren't thinking of it initially, right? Okay, um, so there was a a child that was his that was born out of wedlock, correct? Not out of wedlock, but he did not raise that child. All right, so he uh, he he abandoned the child then. No. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It was raised as someone else's child then, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's what I needed. So I knew there was kind of like a little bit of a soap opera going on there in family history. Okay. Um, did Did you know him? Yes. Okay. Um, an interesting character. Very. An interesting character. Um, there's, uh, talk about a soap opera. There's a lot of twists and turns. In your family history, I want to suggest. <laughs> in that particular uh, line of it are, uh, yes, his family. Yes. yes, very interesting. I also need to know about Evelyn or the female with the E name connected to all of that as well. Eva Main. And who is that? That was one of his wives. Interesting. And so all of these people have passed on, correct? Yes. Okay. I want to suggest that they are together. Um, is it at all possible, because I keep coming back to a child being born out of wedlock. Now, there's a child that Charles, uh, Charles Raymond fathered that was raised as someone else's child. But to your knowledge, did he also father a child that had been born out of wedlock? He could have, but I have no knowledge. Of that oh, thank you. I'm wondering about that. I think that when he was a younger, oh, I'm being told to call him a scoundrel, by the way. It's okay. Would that make sense? Yes. Something of a scoundrel. I think that when he was a young man, he was uh, quite good looking and uh, quite a smooth talker. Probably. Quite a smooth talker. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> good. Char charm the pants off you <laughs> is what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I think in his case, literally. <laughs> yeah, but he's quite a character. But I want to tell you, Sarah, that they are all very encouraging of you to continue your research. They actually call you historian. And I'm wondering if you're gathering information that would be put into book form. Is that a possibility? Oh. Uh Yes. The reason why I'm saying that is because they're actually showing me you collating all of this um, genealogical data in, in book form. And I don't know if you are something of an author or a writer yourself, but it's not just a presentation of facts. It's there's a narrative. I have done that. And are you in process of continuing that or adding to that or embellishing that? There's also supposed to be photographs with it as well in yeah. this book. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And is that a completed project or is that in the works? Oh, no. Never complete. <laughs> okay. So what I'm being shown is, because if you don't do it before you leave, nobody else is going to pick up the ball. I realize that. There's nobody else that has an interest in it, unfortunately. So uh, you got to get cracking here, Sarah. And they're showing me, 
What's Shutterfly? What's Shutterfly? That sounds familiar. Shutterfly, it used to be a, a photo handling place online years ago. Is it still in operation? I don't know. Probably. Andrea said she'll check. I could read her lips. Great. So um, it almost feels as though this book could be printed on demand in in smaller quantities. Yes. That you could that and I'm wondering if Shutterfly does that. Oh. That you could then be pre presenting to uh select family members uh when when it's ready. I have done that. Okay, you have done that, but it feels like the book's not complete. Oh no. <laughs> so you're gonna be adding to it, updating it and so on, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I need to ask who drove the Ford? Oh, my first husband. And he has passed, correct? No. He's still here? Mm -hmm. Who who that's passed on would know that that he had that he drove the Ford? Because I'm picking up a male energy. I want a to lot say of people would. my father would have my brother. I want to say fa I want to say father. Did your dad Never like him? Dad. Not very much. And did someone drive a flatbed or pickup that has passed? Oh, yes. Would, would that have been your dad? Well, probably at times. I, I just need to know if you re recall that. The reason why I'm asking is, Sarah, he shows me his hands and they're big and rough. And I'm wondering if he worked with his hands or did something yes. with his hands. That would be... Um, I don't know if that's gardening. I don't know if that's construction. I don't know if that's woodworking. I don't know what that is. He worked with his hands. He worked with glass and mirrors. Glass and mirrors. Okay, thank you. Uh, but do you recall him doing any kind of woodworking or um, small construction projects also? It feels to me as though he was very handy. Rather handy, yeah. A okay. little remodeling. Yes, things like that. That, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> And could I have Dad's uh, first name, please? Roy. Roy. Now, I don't know if this is him or a reference to someone else that is with him, another male. He strikes the center of his chest. And when a man does that, it's my symbol for uh, a heart attack, congestive heart failure, some other kind of heart-related issue. Is that, Dad? Yes. Thank you. Okay. What's the significance of the month of January? his birthday thank you so this he's acknowledging that this is indeed um him and um he worked hard all his life i want to tell you yes he did thank you it feels to me sarah as though oh did he drop out of school to work or enlist oh uh to work yes to work thank you because he makes me feel as though he started working at a very young age oh yes at a very young age. And is, does he have a farm connection in his past also? Because I'm yes. smelling manure. That's why I'm asking. Yes, he was raised in the country. Thank you. Okay. So a country boy. Yes. Well, I think your dad did all right for himself. I think he did all right for himself. Now, I'm also smelling alcohol. So I don't know if that's dad or uh, someone that is with him or he's making reference to someone who is here who has um, a dependency issue or is, in fact, alcoholic? I don't know much about alcohol and my father. That doesn't seem to, you know, not that I can think of. You're not connecting to that where, with where dad's concerned. Is it possible that there is someone with him who was alcoholic? It's very strong. That's why I'm asking. Possibly. It's certainly possible. Well, I'm, I, it would be in reference to a specific individual. So if that's not coming to mind, then I'll keep, I'll keep moving along here. Okay. I want to suggest that it's with, in dad's family. So is it possible it's his father? Could have been, or a sister. Reason, reason why I'm asking Sarah is he's making me feel as though he and his father have reconciled their differences with one another. Okay. So I want to put that out there to you for your consideration, okay? Okay, yeah. All righty. There's a dog with him also that just barked with your dad. Well, we was always a, pick dogs. Was there a black and white dog that you recall? 
Yes. Yes, there's a dog that is with him that's black and white that just barked. And there's also a reference to um, a gal with him. I almost want to say Maggie as a as a nickname for Margaret. Is there a gal with him with an M name? He has a, had a niece named Margaret, but... Um, this is someone who's passed. Yes. She has passed on? Thank you. He's making reference to... <laughs> Sorry? They've all passed on. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're kind of you're gonna be last last gal standing before long. But um he's making reference to Maggie or Mags for Margaret. So he's he's acknowledging her. Okay. I am sometimes known as Maggie. Oh, you are known as Maggie. My grandchildren call me Maggie. Oh my, isn't that something? Wow. It's I never would have guessed. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting well i guess then he's calling you maggie <laughs> your dad is calling you maggie <laughs> that's, my, that's my grandma name oh how neat that's interesting okay do you have another question for me anything that you're wondering about oh i have to ask you do you have a granddaughter who who has a, a connection to horses or a horse in particular no i don't would you think on that beyond our time together? No, we all, yeah. Yeah. I, and go ahead and ask your question, please. I see a lot of female ancestors, uh, near relatives that have all passed. Now, I dream about them quite often. And I always wonder if there's a message that mm -hmm. I should be getting. In fact, one of is that child that one of Charles child that, that we started talking about has that child is that child deceased yes yeah interesting um that's really curious to me because that's where we started our conversation so it's yes. kind of coming full circle yeah um I don't think it's anything that you have to be losing sleep over Sarah or right. I don't know if I can call you Maggie now too <laughs> but um, no, that's it, reserved <laughs> yeah that's reserved okay I'll call you Sarah <laughs> but um I don't think there's any desperation or urgency here. Um, I, I think it's just maybe a combination of you sort of um, venting psychologically some of what you've been researching and reading about, and then maybe them expressing some satisfaction and gratitude that they won't be forgotten, that their identities and the history that goes with the life that they have lived uh, will be at least accessible to some people within the same family. It's a colorful family history. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Someone was known for hiding money under a floorboard. Who? Oh. Oh. In a ball jar or a mayonnaise jar or something like that. Someone who didn't trust banks. Yes, I, I remember someone like that. Yep. So there's an interesting family history there in terms of stories to be told and some yet to be discovered. And how do they feel about me discovering these things? They're all for it. They're all for it. And I think that's what Charles Raymond was trying to communicate earlier, too, or why he was being forthcoming in, you know, confessing to uh, some of his indiscretions. I, they're all for the truth being illuminated. Uh, and they're all for you um, getting the information into the hands of future generations within the family. Like you said, very few of them are interested, though. Very few of them are interested now. No. Yeah. Now. They may be when they're much older. And though they will be very glad to have had the family history that you've compiled at that time. They may not I be interested so. now. Because they're younger, they have busy lives and families and so on. But when they're older, I think they'll be very much appreciative of what you were able to uh, collate. Okay. All right. Any other questions for me, Sarah? Uh, not right now. All right. Listen, if any of you three gals uh, are able to verify and validate anything that we talked about that you weren't sure about, please follow up with Kathleen and Andrea so they can include it in their show notes. There were some things that you weren't certain about that you want to do a little digging around. And I enjoyed every moment of our time together. I think the prize goes to Anne for uh, the most amazing validation with the copy of Little Women inscribed to you by Grandma next to the roses. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, I started out by talking about how I develop an amnesia almost instantly about everything I do, but I think that's going to stick with me for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll remind you, William, because that yeah. was definitely something very memorable. That was yeah. beautiful. But I had a ball with you three lovely ladies. And um, I'm hopeful that I was of service to each of you. And hopefully that you can uh, you can join us or some of your friends can join us when we have our session uh, with Andrea and Kathleen on July 16th. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, thank you very, very much. Wonderful. It was a great pleasure. Thank you, everyone. And that wraps up this episode. And I will say William Shutterfly does print on demand. And uh, you can make little books and compile them with photos and different things like that. So uh, I would like to verify that. Thank as you. Well. Very interesting. Yeah. There you go, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> so until we meet again beyond the Reiki Gateway, thank you for listening. And from myself and the team here at Beyond the Reiki Gateway, we'd like to say thank you to our listeners for all of your support including leaving great reviews, becoming BTRG insiders, and sharing this show with your friends and family. Drop us a line at info at beyondthereikigateway.com anytime. Tell us what's on your mind and take great care. Until next time. We thank you again for joining us. And of course, we invite you to join us next time as we journey beyond the Reiki Gateway with Kathleen Johnson and Andrea Kennedy.